The Maui News Sports Report is awake and stirring with week six of the MIL football season in the books. First, I need a moment of enthusiasm to uh, kind of get the scariest loss I can remember from my ducks, my ducks, in a long, long time out of my system. So my friend, uh, Woodstock, Halloween Woodstock, is going to lighten the mood a little bit. Okay, now that we feel better, I'm Rob Coleus, he's Jordan Helly, and uh, Jordan, um, uh, a, a, a little bit of a strange and scary week in the, uh, in the MIL uh, football ranks this week. Uh, to lead off, let's talk about the game that was played, your game, uh, Kamehameha Maui uh, against Lahaina Luna, really, uh, you know, kind of game two in the best of a three series, it looks like, at least at this point. Uh, the Lunas come back from a touchdown down twice uh, to pull out a 20 to 14 win. Jordan, you're the offensive coordinator for uh, Kamehameha Maui, so I'm going to ask you to put on your interviewee hat, if you will, and um, let me be the interviewer. Um, you know, the Lunas, as we talked about last week, they came to play, did they not? Yeah, definitely. Uh, you got to love some of the things they did, some of the changes they made offensively. Uh, I thought Dylan Delatore was terrific at quarterback for them. Uh, just a really gritty effort by them. You know, we had uh, two seven-point leads in that game, up seven to nothing, up fourteen to seven, and, and they rallied back and came up with two late touchdowns uh, and took advantage of some opportunities late in the game, and, and we did not. Uh, so you got to give them a lot of credit, and, and, and they really had their backs up against the wall. Obviously, we kind of had the, the luxury of perhaps potentially falling into a championship game. So you, you got to give them all the credit in the world. And uh, both defenses were just unbelievable. There were only eighteen first downs total in the game. Uh, gale forced wins uh, made the punting game, the, the, the kicking game really hard to deal with. Uh, and the Lunas, like you said, took advantage. You guys took that 14 to seven lead on just an electric uh, 50 yard interception return for a touchdown uh, by Kamuela Kaniel Peel. Uh, and that was in the fourth quarter already. It appeared like you guys uh, had the momentum, the, the Lunas block a punt uh, to get a short field for the tying touchdown, and then another short punt into the wind, um, you know, gave them a short field, a 39-yard field, which they only needed three plays to traverse a 10-yard touchdown pass to Ronnie Espiritu uh, to, you know, to take the win. And, you know, October 30, 31st, uh, scary, uh, is the weekend designated for championship games obviously the second round has got to play out but uh the luna's getting a win when they needed it most and then jordan on saturday night first time i can remember uh a forfeit very unfortunate situation at king keiko like having to forfeit to uh maui high first of all let's say this i know that the the staff the administration at king keiko like they told me they wanted to play no doubt about it i'm sure the kids wanted to play uh, but they were below that league mandata mandated number of 25 guys that you have to be able to dress for a game. And so the, it was really out of their hands. Yeah, you can only go off based of, you know, what we know uh, from from the school and what they've put out there. And, and you kind of think back to when maybe the last time we've seen a forfeit and you think yeah. back to, you know, some of those Kahamana whole days, yeah. a lot of the reasons why we have the minimum number rule no doubt. Uh, of 25 and, and, and yeah, and hearing from coach Sanchez, you know, they were ready to roll with 23. Yeah. Uh, unfortunately, that's just the rule, you know, and yeah. there, there's no way of kind of skirting around the rule of 25 and, and, you know, you can, you can make the argument that, Hey, maybe pull up a couple of JV kids, but then you deplete the JV roster yeah. at the same time. Maybe those kids aren't ready. You would think that they would have been up already if they were. Right. Uh, so, you know, uh, just a tough situation for uh, coach Sanchez, uh, and his team to kind of have to deal with uh, playing the numbers game, and, and you know that you know they, they've said that they hope to get some guys back from from injury and and, and illness back next week, and, and hopefully get to that 25. But yeah, just a, just a strange scenario uh, that kind of resulted in uh, just one game being played this weekend. Yeah, and tough on Maui High as well. There's no doubt about it. They played last week. Obviously, they didn't play this week. They have a bye this coming week. 
And so it's going to be three weeks between games for the Sabres, who have 4-0, now 5-0, uh, are certainly, uh, they, they are assured of at least a championship game um, in, in the Division I ranks. And so, you know, uh, they're going to be playing in at least a postseason situation. And to have that three-week break in the middle of the season, that's rough. And, uh, and Solani Valhea as well, uh, he was on a 1,000-yard rushing quest. And you know it's not, it's not just that young man. It's the offensive line. It's the offensive unit. They take great pride in, that, in achieving that kind of number, which hasn't been done in the MIL since 2006. So, yeah, very unfortunate situation. But let's hope things uh, kind of settle themselves and work themselves out um, up country and that, that the, the ramifications for Maui High aren't too great. Um, and, um, Jordan, a, a big game in the 11-man ranks. Molokai improves to 3-0 uh, and o with a big win over Hana. Yeah, they've been the class of the state, really, in eight-man football. And it'd be kind of interesting to see how their talent stacks up against uh, some of the, the smaller 11-man teams, really. And uh, just a dominant victory over Hana, going to Hana, uh, the farthest road trip you can possibly imagine, uh, really, uh, in a league in, in football here in the state of Hawaii. And, and they have just, no matter where they've played, they've rolled. And uh, they look like they're just kind of this immovable unstoppable force that, that's going to keep on rolling throughout the rest of the season all into the playoffs. They really are. The names go on and on. Anna Victorino, uh, Maka, uh, Bagai, uh, Sonal, uh, uh, certainly John Michael, uh, Mokiao, Duva, Shell. The names go on and on for the Farmers. And uh, I'd love to see them play the, the Big Island champion. If Molokai does finish the job and win the MIL title, I'd love to see them go against the Big Island champion, maybe get a little momentum built for a state tournament for those eight-man guys. They deserve it, no question about it. I'm with Kui Han here, and his Molokai Farmers just defeated Hana Dragons, 87-14. to 14. You guys had a great game tonight. Yeah, we had a great game. Both sides of the ball played good. Uh, offense, we executed. The O-line made some good blocks. Our backs were able to read us. On the defense, we were able to get off the ball quick, um, execute to the ball, and just play good football. So you're 3-0 in league? You're 4-0 yes. on the season? Yes. How'd your boys do tonight? Everybody played well. Uh, right from the get-go, we were uh, kicking on offense and defense. You know, Hana had some mistakes and we capitalized and, and scored some points. And, you know, everybody got some quality reps today. Uh, Jordan, in MIL Volleyball, it looks like the cream of the crop. Uh, certainly two unbeaten teams in Kamehameha Maui and uh, Seabury Hall. Yeah, so far kind of a shorter schedule this past week because of the, uh, the county fair. Uh, Kamehameha Maui continues to roll towards that regular season title. You know, Kinki Kalike is going to have a lot to say oh, yeah. in the postseason tournament. Seabury looks to be, you know, kind of head and shoulders above. They were in the state championship game last year in Division Two. Would not be surprised to see them make that sort of similar run again this year. And, uh, yeah, Seabury's a good team. We haven't been able to see them much. They've been out and about uh, across Maui County. and uh, But, uh, yeah, they, they are a really good team. Uh, and I think they can make some noise in that D2 state tournament, no doubt about it. Uh, and uh, we wrap things up this week, Jordan. Uh, UH, I was watching that game more than my Ducks this weekend at the same time because I just couldn't take it. Uh, they, the defense comes up uh, tough again. Maui's Keelan Evalico doesn't make the trip because of a family funeral here on Maui. Uh, but, you know, two and, th uh, two, and two for UH, and, uh, you know, I look at that schedule, and I, I can count four or five more winnable games. If it's five, we're talking about the Hawaii Bowl, which would be unbelievable for this team. Yeah, I think so. And, and the way that the, the Mountain West Western Division, the West Division, uh, I don't think it's outside the realm of possibility that they could be contending for that title and maybe get into the Mountain West title game. I know we're getting ahead of ourselves a little bit and extrapolating, but the West Division isn't necessarily the juggernaut of the Fresnos and the Nevadas of years past. So, yeah, I, I think it's very optimistic, especially that defense, the way they played. Oh, man, they looked good. They really did. That's our report for this week. Sorry things fell off the desk, but send us your bobbleheads. <laughs>